the flies are out already, girl. Yeah, you know what they're attracted to, don't you? No, tell me, darling. <laughs> Beauty. Really? Yeah, you're beautiful, aren't you, princess? I have my moments. Well, today we're going to visit the uh, old reservoir, hopefully. And the old lead and silver mines. Silver mines. <clears throat> and there's also a little, another little story. And we've got a story about some folks who actually... Uh, Charlie and Rita Barker. Now Charlie used to come up here with his children in the pram. Take this, this path, there's two paths actually. But we're going to take the lower path today. And he'd take them up to the mines in the pram and he was hoping to find silver. <clears throat> it is private property folks, don't be thinking you can stroll up here. <clears throat> We've had permission from the owners to do it. Yes, um, William Cannell very kindly says we can come up here. So it's taken a whole year to get this far. They've been planning it for 12 months. <laughs> But, you know, we've gained so much information. We hope it'll be better because of that. Yeah. And there's a little farm up here called Ballalona. Um, and Charlie would come up here with the pram and he'd go through the little farmyard. Who's Charlie? Charlie Barker, that's Jerry's dad. Oh, right. Yeah. And then I think there was uh, three sons and a daughter at the time. So anyway, Charlie would come up here with the pram and there was Tony, David um, and Angela and then uh, was there a young one, uh, Kenny as well and Mr and Mrs Boyd who used to live at Ballalona Farm at the time they'd be going through the farm and they'd stop and have a chat and uh, he'd say Gosh, there's another one every year, isn't there? It's a bit of a Kelly trait, that. I was really, going to say, it? there's a similar story to what you used to say about your auntie. Yeah, I've, uh, I've probably told you folks before. It's a good tale. I had an auntie and uncle, they had a Scottish kids. I was 15. And we used to live next door to each other, farm-wise. And every summer, the mother and the dad would call and see my parents. And I used to say to my mum, why is such and such a body such a fat lady? To which I get a smack in my ear while being cheeky. I told so not to ask the question. So in my later years I thought, she'd always be pregnant. When I met her a few years ago, she was like skinny as a lat. Yeah, finally, finally fixed the TV. <laughs> and they outlived all our family, all my relatives. Pair uh, outlived them all. <clears throat> so I've got a picture of Mr and Mrs Boyd that I got from my museum, Jerry did, outside the house up here. That's where they used to live. No, Mrs Boyd lives down in Kirk Michael now. And just across the way, I love that word, <laughs> in Willow Nook Cottages was Mrs Boyd's brother called Johnny Moore. Have a picture of him, which we'll put up, but that's from my museum as well. Oh, gosh, I'm tired already. I'd like to talk more, but to the other moment, <laughs> I need the wind for walking. So, anyway, these um, barkers lived at a place called Wayside, which is just on the main road there. And uh, Jerry sent me a lovely picture. I think it's uh, is it the dad or the three siblings outside of the house. Well, it's been left, I think they left it in the 70s. They used to have a goat in the garden, get their milk. And they'd be playing around all the fields. And uh, Tony used to go missing in the blackberries. Like that, and there's a little brother, they were very close, one year apart in age. 
So I can imagine how much fun they had. She did those mate. days. Yeah. I remember picking blackberries and blueberries with my parents. Didn't need a phone. No. <laughs> so this is the track they would have walked, Carl, I guess, is it? Yeah, so you can imagine pushing a silver cross pram up here. With the three kids, they'd be going up in the pram. And it would have been four once Kenny turned up. But once they got to the top, if Charlie, the dad, had found any lead, the kids were shoved out the pram for the lead to get back down. <laughs> Which I found quite funny. Well, some things are more important. Well, yeah. And um, I think it was their granddad used to melt it down, try and make some uh, soldiers with it. With the lead? Yeah. yeah that's what they did those days. So, going back to Wayside, there's a picture of Angela outside the front, I think with a mum or... But anyway, in the background, there's a red three-wheeler. Which, if you see this property today, it's actually up for sale. It's uh, quite overgrown and you, you wouldn't think you'd even get a three-wheeler in there, but the garden must be massive. Well, I think some of us gone down to Cool Dairy Glen, hasn't it? Yes, uh, that's where... I think it was the two brothers who discovered part of the glen all them years back. Oh, Charlie started to do this walk, I think it was in the 60s. He did it for a good while, but once he'd moved down to uh, Kirk Michael, ten years later, he didn't come back and do it again. But Jerry does it now. Does she? Yeah, I don't think she got to go when she was younger, because she was born in Kirk Michael. So. Well, she would be born after they stopped doing it, I guess. Yeah. There'd be lots of tales like that in the Isle of Man if people actually unfolded them, wouldn't they? Mm. But the pram, uh, apparently it's, well, a, a few years ago, it's still in the garden somewhere in the bushes. What sort of pram was it? Silver Cross, I think. Oh, right. One of those standard ones, you know, with the hard wheels. Yeah, yeah. Not like the luxury stuff you get nowadays. Can you imagine pushing that all the way up here? That three-wheeler reminds me of, it looks like one of the ones that uh, Del Boy used to use and... Only fools yeah. and horses. But it, it's very similar, actually. There's a blue one in Peel. Didn't your mum and dad have one of those? Yes. My dad had a brown one. Um, my mum had a white and a blue striped one, and then a green one. I remember right. There's no reverse gear in those things. No, there was. Was there? Yeah, yeah. Oh, right. You just didn't need um, a test. You just you had to have a bike test. motorbike licence. Mm. So it's quite handy, but it wasn't for my street cred, you know, going to school. No, it'd be better walking, really, wouldn't it? Yeah, I did in the end. Whoa. <laughs> yeah. Just uh, So we'll, we'll stick a few pictures up on that um, this little story Carl has told us. And it'll make more sense when you see the photographs. As you said, the whole lot's up for sale now. I think it's up for two and a half thousand, two hundred and fifty grand. Yeah, but it comes with it. There's an adjoining property just behind it. Which is in quite good nick, more good nick than Wayside. Yeah. Um, it's just quite amazing. I've, I've drove past that building so many times. And just known. never knew, never, I've always thought, oh, I'd love to go and have a look at that. Just not the story um, of our lives, though. Yeah, and then I happened to meet Jerry a few years ago, and then lo and behold, that was her parents' and siblings' house. So. So on these walks all the way up to the mine, Charlie would tell the kids that it was their nature lesson. Really? Yeah, Tony seen his first wren up here. Seen his first what? Wren. Wren? Yes. What I do? I've said, have you ever seen a wren's nest? I haven't. It's completely enclosed. Is it really? With a little hole in, in the centre. So they even build a roof on it. Carl's packed off sandwiches as usual. Ah, well, there's another little story for you. So what sandwiches do you think we might be having? Um, I'm guessing it's egg and cress. I've put a little surprise in it for you. Have you? Yes. I thought I was going to get me surprised when I got to, got to the place anyway. <laughs> well. So I'm going to get two surprises. Mm, the, the kids in the pram, they all had egg and cress sandwiches. Did they? Yeah, uh, Angela recalls this. And... 
dad would have builder's tea, which I can imagine is quite vile because I don't like strong tea. Very strong with <laughs> sugar, I'm guessing. So we haven't brought builder's tea, but we have made the effort with the egg sandwiches. We love an egg with tea anyway, don't we? We do. So today is, what day is today, my girl? 17th. 17th of July, 2023. Should be up on YouTube before sometime in August. I love doing the videoing and the walking, I hate doing the editing. I'm not really good at that, it takes me a minute. Ow. An hour to do a minute's editing. Well, you've coaxed in somebody to help me now, haven't you? I have. Tell you what to do, I mean guide you. No, you were right the first time. <laughs> I'm always right, you know this. Such a delight to be with her. <laughs> they said the trek to the, to the reservoir and back, or to the lead mines, was 10 miles. That's five miles there and five miles back. That Obviously. could have been the higher track though, couldn't it? Mm -hmm. Imagine that. Pushing a pram up here, five miles. I know. Loading whatever you did and walking back. And the other kids would love it. I can't see today's kids agreeing to it. I just love the thought of Charlie. He got prospecting rights, which I've not heard of that before. Yeah. Have you? Yeah. Oh, that's because you're old. Um, so he got prospecting rights. And I thought, I don't know what I'm going to. Kids, get in the pram, go on a nature lesson. Let's head up here. The kids would have loved it. Well, they're still talking about it, and the parents yeah, are dead years yeah. now. And so they that's... were saying that they'd play in the river, um, shoes and socks off, build dams. And there's a section up here, apparently near where the mines are, which I'll be searching for, and the rabbit hole that they left lead in and could never find it again. But there's a little section that Angela says that they'd bring a white tent up, especially when it was sunny and uh, pitch the tent up on this flat piece next to a hut. So they'd be up for the whole day, wouldn't they? I guess so, yeah. Well, it's just brilliant, isn't it? Don't need the fun bun, then, do we? I always believe in this sort of stuff. I just wish that I could rope Sammy in more. <laughs> yeah, but if you make people do it, it defeats the object, doesn't it? And actually, there's another thing for us to look for today. If you look, see they, because they came up from the top end, but that was quite overgrown through the yard at Ballalona. But um, they'd look down towards the reservoir and just around that area somewhere is the entrance to the mine. Just on the horizon there, or just below the horizon, you can see the old mine shaft, or one of them, because it's actually been fenced in. To be more than this one, to be quite a few on the hillside, I'm sure. And it was always filled with water. So why they stopped doing it wasn't because they couldn't keep the water out. What about that wheel? Is that not pumping out now? Well, it did, but eventually even that couldn't cope. Ooh. It's in uh, volume two of my books and Fultons. Which I have in my bag. So, because now I'm carrying Adam's, it. <laughs> now I can remember everything he's doing aboard with us. I'll tell you a bit about the place when we get there. It's going to sit somewhere warm Ooh. and have our sandwiches. Aye. And I'll tell you what, the way I feel the moment to be well earned. I'm looking forward to them. And I'm not going to tell you what the surprise is. You can uh, discover it for yourself, Princess. Such a tease. <laughs> oh, I know how to treat a man. You know, when they were coming down on the higher side, I don't know if they nicknamed it Windy Ridge, but I quite like it. Well, obviously, it must have been windy. And I they roly-poly down these hills as well. You have seen that bloody hill? Could have uh, been that one. <laughs> we used to do that. As kids all down the hill. Thought of doing these days scares me shitless. So we're following a farm track, really. Because the... Uh, the two big hills are farmed by a local farmer, obviously. 
And this is how he um, gets up to visit them or take the stock out. The big hill on the way, it's called Slough again. And for life me, I can't remember what the other one's called. You're right. What? Right again? It's muggy. <laughs> it's muggy. I told you that. Hey, but what do I know? <clears throat> well, look, you haven't got 70 stone on your back, have you? You felt this camera. Do really I complain? Like Do that. I complain? <laughs> like sex, that. What, ten minutes? You're doing it four times. <laughs> In let's, one month. Let's talk, let's talk months. <laughs> let's not be cocky here. I'm all right, I've got this. Do you know what the hill is on the left-hand side's called? I can't remember. Oh, you know what? I don't know. She said Slough Regain is somewhere, but that's over there, isn't it? No, that's what that one there's Slough Regain. Right oh, in front of you on the right, yeah. Oh, I think I do mention the book, so hopefully. She did say. But, well, my goodness me. I tell you what, my underpants are sticky. Oh, oh I hope there's no cattle. There's a gate here. I think that's why she said it's 10 miles. We we'll won't be going back on ourselves. Well, she did say they climbed into fields as well, so we go this way. Yep. So is the river there? Yep. Yeah. So I followed the path they would have followed, we think. They'd be on the straightway, not up and up behind some contortionist road. We can't quite see the river, but Tony recalls little bridges, you know, like uh, stone bridges going across yeah. all the way up, like that one we haven't found yet. Well, they'd probably make get little from the mine up here when they were mining. Yeah. I would like to have seen those little bridges. Folks, you've got to be careful because there's a mine on, on this hill and a quarry. I never realised I thought they both were the same, but they're not. The first video I did with Carla was to a quarry. It was called, El Qu what was it called, the quarry? Oh, um, oh God, now you're talking. But you know what, this place, this was the first place that I thought we were going to, because you said Kirk Michael led lead and silver mines. You said some mines at Kirk Michael. Oh, I wouldn't have said that. And I researched on this place, and then he took me over to Slough again. So I had no information. <laughs> but Carl is good to talk, as you can guess. So sure. <laughs> she waffled through it. That is far worse than that, because I said, if you wanted to go, where would be the first place you'd like to go to, Carla? Oh, I'm still waiting to go to Glenroy, to be fair. Glenroy, she said. I want to go to Glenroy. I said, no. Right, we'll go to Kirk Michael. We'll go to Kirk Michael and go. And he's still pulling the wool over my eyes in 12 months' time, aren't you? Uh, and other things, my girl. <laughs> Whatever. Uh, for those who are thinking about this place, as I said, we've had permission. And even if you haven't had permission, it's a good old trek. And it's only even under your feet. And the flies are buzzing around. Horse oh, flies, especially. God. I thought we were stopping for a break. You didn't stop. Oh, I can see some slate. Slow down, girl. Oh, you know how to excite me. You can forget foreplay for Carla. I wonder how big their little white tent was, to be fair, because, you know, back then they weren't these compact things. One yeah, of them would have to carry that up. Big heavy canvas thing. Unless they left it up here. Nah, 
be in that pram. I can't imagine the pram on this. Bloody hell. Well, they wouldn't be able to take the... <sighs> they must have gone the, that way. Where the, and the tent back. Oh, my God. <gasps> oh, my God! It's the reservoir! Oh, bloody hell. So that must be the top pathway going across there, look. Or something. Oh my God. That didn't take long, did it? Oh, no, so it's about fine now. <laughs> I'm so unfit compared to you. Well, there's 30 years between us. Dirty bugger. Hey, I tell you, I was looking at last night. I don't want to know. <laughs> it didn't take long. Des O'Connor. Remember Des O'Connor? Yeah. He's, di he's dead. He's 83 when he died. All right. And guess how much younger than him his wife was. How much? Have a guess. Hang on, you just said wife. Yeah, they Don't got get married. get ahead of yourself. They got married. Go on, 40 years. 37 years. Oh, dirty bugger. And they had four kids. <laughs> died when he was 83. Wow. Oh, exhaustion. <laughs> <laughs> <sighs> oh. You all right, love? Yeah. You're just trying to be manly. <laughs> Not succeeding. Oh, we'll just sit up here somewhere in a minute. Do a fine little breeze. Yeah, there it is. Should have brought me shades. It's a bit sunny. Can you edit out me puffing and panting? Been on left. <laughs> I bet you're puffing and panting worse than that. Ray. Oh gosh, look at that. You're jumping in. It's the hair bells. Yeah, lovely. Oh wow. Look at them hen. Oh, I can see the hut. This is brilliant. Thank you, William Cannell. Oh. Hey, let's sit on the hill. Well, there's a breeze. Oh. Oh, I'm going to have to get a picky. Can we sit here? Yep. Right here, just sit. <sighs> hey, doggies, come on. This is somebody's tent, isn't it? It is, yeah. I don't think it'll be their tent somehow. No, it's not white. Not and even. I don't think they'd uh, just dump a tent here, to be fair. No, I don't think it would either. And it wasn't here anyway, it was up there. There! Roxy, it's there! Go and get a penny. Go get the stick! Oh, my God. You'll have to go and get it for them, love. I'm not getting There we are, there it is, Roxy! Oh, my God. <laughs> the lead's gone to her head. Ah, oh, she's found it. What were you saying about them drinking? Yeah. Oh, yeah, the kids, they used to drink in the, the rivers. Did they? For years and years, yeah. They haven't had lead poisoning. Oh, I suppose that's true, actually. But... Good girls, go on in. Oh, here we go. <laughs> I thought they were going to argue then. Good girl, Penny. Come on, then. You've just dropped it, you plonker. Are you recording? Yeah. I got the gesture, don't you worry about it. Ray constantly trying to get me to ditch my bag, by the way, people. And it's got the butties in it, he must be mental. Hey, doggies. You want to wash your hair dye off, Roxy? Huh? 
So it's quite a steep old uh, path down to the reservoir. And I suggest you don't come be on your own. You won't slip and you're stuck. Oh, thistles are looking dandy this year. I don't think this would have been the original overflow. Uh, it's just broke through, I think. It's was decommissioned in 1980. All the overflow is making out of war today. What do you think of this? Oh, lovely. That reminds me of um, when the kids knew that they were almost here, going across Windy Ridge. They'd always see dead sheep and sheep's heads and stuff because the seagulls would be swarming around as well. Uh, they'd pick the carcass clean, wouldn't they? So they knew that as soon as they were near the reservoir that they weren't far from the mines. I love that name, Windy Ridge. I do. Just sums it up, doesn't it? Yeah, better than... I mean, slew, slew for again. Slew for again. It's a bit of a mouthful. Windy Ridge. Yep. And we've got ferns galore. So there it is, in all its glory. It's been up since 1930. It's nearly a hundred years old. Built by a uh, Crows, I think, from uh, Kirk Michael. I'll tell you a bit about that when we get our tea. I'm going to go for you now because it's a bit noisy. Okay, so we've explored the old reservoir. We're now going to go up to the mines, which is where they did their prospecting. Oh, Penny. <coughs> We're going to follow the uh, natural riverbed. Did you remember the bit about John Quayle? Permission for the reservoir. Yeah, only a bit of it's in the book. We'll do that when we get up there. Oh, shall we? A little weird. Yeah. Yeah, a little pond there. Discussion about the day. Oh, I don't use it. Have you walked up here before? Not this way. It's probably not safe. Well, it's bleeding level. You put me through some stuff you do. Oh, it's frightening me. You know what they say? No. The scare once a day keeps the doctor away. <laughs> right. You get that when I wake up next to you. <laughs> See what it's like, folks. Hang on, we're a bit chapter Go here. on, keep going. The prick's there. Keep it close. Oh, well, you know what? I'm going round. I'm hey. going brave. Yeah, there's a little path there. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, she's wimped out of a bit of gorse. It's as if she's not used to having prickles. Come on, 
good girl. Easy, my love. I've still got how many months to change my mind about being your wife? Only 11 months. So have you decided where you're going to be yet? Hung. A Kelly or a Callow. Two nice names. Oh, Thanks, okay. names. You join them together. Yeah, probably will. Yeah, so where are you going? I don't know, I quite like Carlo Kelly. I don't really want to lose the kid's name, so. I don't mind what you do. I'll just not do anything then. <laughs> oh, you said these were waterproof. Yeah, not stupid proof, though. <laughs> hey, you just remember who's got the buddies. <laughs> oh, sorry, love. <laughs> sorry, love, yeah, I thought you might. Me and Penny aren't stupid if we're going up here. If he dug anything around here, or is this just not it? It's not, it is part of it, but well, more likely to be up there, he would have dug. Yeah, it's been a challenging few uh, meters, I say the least. We've gone off the pram path, definitely. You think this is generally a pack horse path? And we've picked a nice day to do it. They may not have done it in a nice day. I don't think you could do this in the winter, could you? No. You're going to wait for me? You want to come up here? Oh, let's go and do the mines. It'll be a lovely little walk. This is why we drink. No, it's why you drink. Yay, there's the hut, that means we can eat. Oh, wow. So I've cheered up now already. The flat section next to the hut would be where the white tent was. Oh. I'm guessing the kids didn't play in that bit of river down there, because that was horrible. The kids are playing at all, they haven't dammed up and... There's floating sticks down to see we won the race and stuff. Can you imagine spending a day here oh, as kids? Oh God, look at that view. And you'd be safe. Right. You had to get up here to see that, my love. Yeah, it's always worth it in the end, but you know, I do like a moan. <laughs> oh, I know that. <laughs> Somebody told me that was your middle name, wasn't it? Yeah. Oh, that's the wheel casing, isn't it? I knew a lady called Mona, you know, or two ladies called Mona, and neither one of them ever moaned. Do you know what? I'm going to take this off. Oh, uh, don't take it. We, we may not be coming back this way. I'm going to go put it up there where the tent would be, and then I'm going to have a look round. I thought we had our buddies, you said. Okay, but well, do you want to look round, then have butties, or have butties and look round? It's oh, up to you. Let's have the butties and look princess. around. Princess. Right, okay. So I'm guessing this little building here would have been the, the manager's office, if it was such a thing. Do you remember when you were a kid? Well, you may not remember, but you'd put your backpack on this because you were cool, and you'd carry it like that. <laughs> Never had a backpack as a kid. No, I was just thinking that, probably not. Is that over there? Is that the uh, bomb house thingy? Whoop. That's where they kept the dynamite, I guess, yeah. Yeah. Oh, dead sheep. We're here. Nothing's changed then. Yeah, this would be the fat, flat area. Oh, man. Right. Just have our dinner near that sheep. Come on, this side. <laughs> Right. Poor sheep. 
Come here. What? Here. Right, well, we've uh, made, made the grand effort and got here. It's a bit uh, challenging in places, my love, wasn't it? It was. Is it, Penny? But so we've stopped here by the hut. By the where, man manager's hut. Yeah, where the tent would be, and we're going to have our nice egg butties. And then we're going to do a bit of exploring. Yep. Um, actually, Charlie Barker buried some lead in a rabbit hole so we could have a look. They never found it, but you know. What? <laughs> There's thousands of acres here. Uh, for all day. It only took us an hour and a half to get up here. Bloody rabbit hole. <laughs> now, so we'll have a break now. The one here is eating our sandwiches, and then we'll come back and discuss a little bit about this area with a little detail. Good time for you folks to have a cup of tea. I gave myself a little horn. You got yourself a little horn? A horn. Is it a horn? It is a horn, isn't mm -hmm. it? Oh, look! Oh! This, is, this reminds me of that time when I was up Dream Beery and there was a big mound of stones and we thought it was a bomb, so we kicked it just to make sure it wasn't. Oh, that's sensible, isn't it, really? Yeah, here to tell the story. There's somebody left with some sandwiches. I think it's one of those GOK share yeah, it is. I would say so. Oh, this is cool. Oh, wow. Are you supposed to just look at things? I guess so, yeah. There's little things left in here. I'll just lift it up to the camera. So, we've got a. I don't know what that is. Oh, it's that place in Rome. Put, put it down. Oh, yeah, it is. What's it called? No idea. It's not called that. Got Mickey, Mickey Mouse. Lovely little green stone. Wonderful. Three green stones, a nice hmm. shell. There's a notebook. Looks a bit damp. It does look a bit damp. I don't think I'm going to mess with that. I don't want to ruin it. Wow. Covid days. <laughs> COVID that was day. some one walk a day, wasn't it? Not just. <laughs> I'm definitely going to bump into somebody up here about take a mask. Little characters. Pen. Never need a pen. It's always in one of these boxes. But yeah. yeah. Little things like that. Something to pass the night away when you're stuck up on the hill on your own. Something from Thailand. Oh, lovely. It's a shame we got I haven't nothing. got nothing to put in it. I've, uh, no, a snotty rag. I don't think they'd want that, my love. No. I wish I'd known. So, as we were saying, this is the manager's office. And he'd be sitting up here in his warm office, watching the men down there hammering away, digging. Although they must have had a. Um, Use of dynamite because there's a dynamite house up here. We'll go and check it out in a minute. This was his view Roxy. out on the hillside. That's the dynamite house just over there. Shabba. And I've just been shabbered. So instead of going straight on, the wheel of water would have gone out the side there. How do you mean? I'll show you. Is that a wheel house just sitting there watching the wheel? Yeah, if you look down here, or if you look down there, oh yeah, that gap there. It's got some uh, rods to hold in place. There must be quite a big wheel, you know. It'd be thirty odd feet, I reckon. And they took this off and put it somewhere else when they finished. And the water would have exited from the wheel here, back into the stream. Obviously had a use for something. Maybe a chimney of some sort. Another little office. Another little office here. It's another little room next to mine workings. It's got these strange slots. No wall, I wonder what they're for. Somebody know what they're for, I'm sure. And when you would hear the big wheel would be turning from there. 
Let's see, whirling around day and day. I think they had to stop in the summertime when the weather, when the water dried up. Interesting when you look now, the stream is so much lower than the wheel. So either they built a race to carry the water from the stream to the wheel, or it's been eroded. Good girl. Said this sort of ceased existence in the 1880s, so maybe 150 years ago, I guess things would have changed. What are your thoughts up there? Oh, I can see the reservoir, it just looks so nice. You're tempted I've... to jump in today, are you? No, I'll wait for you. Roxy, no! I've just got a nice picture of the dogs. They sit and pose really nicely for me. You never do that for me. You don't do it for me. I do some things for you. It's a good job you brought your buttercup jumper, isn't it? I'll not lose you. I'll stand out in the gorse, I reckon. Yeah. So as you can see, the pad house is an awful long way away from the um, mines, for obvious reasons. We're going to look up there and have an investigation of it. Just a view down over the hillside and the reservoirs in the distance. What a glorious day. To think that every one of these stones would be placed here by hand with a barra or a horse and cart. That was blown up and to be squashed in by the wheel mechanism in that and dumped up here. Lead and silver was the choice. Well, I think more lead than silver. And it does make me laugh that old saying like swinging the lead. It means you don't do very much. I can't see that up here. Look at the spoiled piles around here. Tons and tons and tons of it. It was in existence for many years, cost thousands of pounds to do it, and never generated a profit. Huh? Uh, I guess it would, yeah. I was saying when I was up there talking to myself at the wheel. Yeah. The wheel now is an awful lot higher than the stream. So they must have had some way of getting the water from the stream to the wheel. Yeah. Just to build a rate of some sort. We're wending our way up the river. Eventually we're going to come out of the river and go up and see the little powder house. Now we're going to mosey on to the old powder house. Could have been a toilet, but I think it's a powder house. It says in your book it's a powder house. Not always right, you know. I know this. Most powder houses had two walls in them. Had an in and outer wall, so the... But that one over at Sleep Again didn't. No, I know. It's probably and this easy. is far enough away from there. Yeah. I still would have thought they'd have put the door the other side, you know, to blast that way. But I think you're right. It's far enough away. This does look like a, some sort of mine shaft. <laughs> the um, slight hole in the hill. And below it is the spoil, so maybe they tipped it out and down the hill in the car, who knows. It looks like another mine there as well, on the same principle as the last one. And the spoil is just down below again. I'm sure the mining experts will put me right on this now. Another little building, there's another little building there. Just to be used for something. It's like I've said to you a few times, folks, every time I come back, I find something. 
I've been up here half a dozen times and I've never seen this. This is, it looks to me, we both think, it's probably a walled garden. Carl is just walking around the um, perimeter of it now. And she's coming to where a uh, gate or an entrance is. And um, See that? Yeah. That looks like it might have been a spring or something. Yeah, it could have been cousin because it's rushy, isn't it? We Whoop. think it's... We think it's so too... jump in? Yeah, go on, see how deep it is, darling. Why do I have to always go first? Well, you can swim. No, I'm alright. So as I said, I've been this oh. place quite a few times. I've never seen this before. We think it's too big to be a keel. We're pretty well convinced it would be for growing vegetables to feed the miners. Maybe a bit fancy of an idea, but it does have its merits. Not sure about Definitely this. hard. Is that? Dogs are in it. <laughs> it's definitely um, Drop. It's being Penny. built anyway. Penny! Sure it's built at the same time as this. She's not doing what she's told, my darling. No, she wanted to tug on it. Oh, I know she feels. It's definitely not wet, is it? You get a idea about the you get a better idea about the garden from this side of the valley. It does look more like a garden than where I look at, you know. Hello, baby girl. Hello, my girl. How are you? Yeah. Where's Penny? Nice bit of the road, isn't it? I thought I'd seen a little archway over there, you know, with that wall's going across the river there. Yeah. Well, it wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> thought it was there. Yeah, I was yeah. going to go up to that bit up there, but I'm getting tired. Where's she been? Hmm? Where have you been? My buttercup. What was that for? For the viewers. Look what I got. Show to the viewers. If anybody would like a lovely Manx Dalton's book written by the lovely Ray Kelly. This is volume two, folks. You, you can't, can't get it. <laughs> yeah, adverts are a waste of time. They're all sold out. Some one and threes left, though. We've just um, brought the book with us because there's a lot of information about this little place I couldn't remember. I bet you don't know what page it's on either. 36. Do you? That's sad, isn't it? Is it really? Mm -hmm. right. You, you're right. Which is surprising. So, Carlos, I'm going to read a bit of history about it. Oh. Go on. Well, you wrote it. Well, you do a bit and I'll do a bit. Oh, thank you. Right. As long ago as 1907, Kirk Michael had plans <coughs> made for its own reservoir. The clerk of the commissioners at the time, Mr John Quayle, produced various quotations and options as to where it should be sited. Three places were selected. Ballalona, now I know where that is. We know where Ballalona is. Glen Cam hmm? and White House. So where are those? White House has passed out Kirk Michael on the right hand side, gone out of the town. All oh, right, and what about Glen Cam? Don't know that one. All oh, right. It was 1930 when once again Mr. Quayle was the clerk and the plan was put into place. There were rumours of an epidemic That'd be why that mask was up there. <laughs> <laughs> As two cases had been reported in Kirk Michael, it was blamed on the water supply currently available, which spurred the authorities to push ahead with the scheme. The site selected was in the basin between Slukern and Slufregain. Ah, which so is that's Slukern. And Slufregain. Slufregain. Oh, well, now we know. We knew. We know now. Anyway, Tim will provided a loan of £5,100 and the contractor was Messrs George Crow and Son of Michael. In the 1911 census, Mr George Crow and Mrs Catherine Crow lived at Heather Lee in Station Road. Is that Kurt Michael? Yeah. Mr Crow did have a dispute with the commissioners 
after a court case was settled and the final figure was £6,000, today's value of £350,000. Cheap for a reservoir. Mm. The reservoir was in operation until the early 1980s when it was decommissioned. And it still holds water at the top of the valley, like we've seen. And birds and fish now make good use of the facilities. Ah, hen harriers have made a welcome return to the island. And you're saying when you were visiting the reservoir, a pair were flying round. They were indeed. Ah, right, because um, Tony Barker was saying that he's seen his first wren up here. Really? Uh, but this is like in the 60s. Wouldn't be the same wren, I don't think. Do you think so? No, they don't Male live. Male or female? They don't live that long. Only well, matters to another wren, doesn't it? Um, Kirk Michael Lead and Silver Mines were the scene of many controversies over their lifetime, with huge amounts of money invested and lost. Charles Tetley was a major shareholder. He lived in Glen Willen. Is he the teabag guy? <laughs> in 1869, hey, man, like Mr Tetley's house was attacked with stones by some miners who had been paid off. Ah. Uh, there's a load of controversy. This is funny, this, because Mr Tetley, and D uh, Jerry's dad, he brought up um, builder's tea. Really? <laughs> and it was old Mr Tetley. Wouldn't it be a Tetley's in that? <laughs> there is an earlier reference to Bagarrow Mines. Oh, I said it right, that's good. From 1843 to 44, when three men lost their lives due to foul air. Where's Bagarrow Mines? Is that Sleep for a Game where we went? Well, I, I don't know whether it'd be this one or the other one. I never really found out which one it meant, which mm. one it referred to. But uh, there was Neil Smith and Corkish, and two former had wives and one had six children. Must have been catastrophic for their families because they wouldn't have had any sick pay to feed a family. In 1870, had the year of the wheel christening. It had been built by Kerry and Corlett from Kirkmichael. There was a grand day planned. Harriet Jackson and Eliza McWannell. Mm. Why is the joint manager director smashed a bottle of wine over the wheel? <laughs> the Cook Michael band played and the afternoon the sports were held with many athletes taking part. Mr Croft of Cronk Early had quickly written a poem which he read with... Ooh, that's interesting, Cronk Early. Cause that, um... The house before there's called Cronk Early, isn't it, on the road oh, there? Is it? Yeah, that's yeah, uh, way, wayside Cronk Early. The cost of was Cronk Early. Ah, oh, right. And after to see the big round of applause, a grand day was, was had by all. As we've mentioned already, we've been to the powder house. The wheel was a decent size in this day, 22 foot high and 3 foot wide. And the stream would have powered the wheel, smashing the ore and rock to extract the metal. In 1876, when the working mill was being used, John Quayle lost two fingers. <laughs> I wonder which two fingers do you think he would have lost? The ones you need to lose. <laughs> And in 1882, Fred Quayle died in an accident. Age 19. Age 19. Cause and the cause of death was, was cold. cold. Working for his master at the mine. Yeah. Gosh, I'm surprised we're all still alive here in the winter. It's done well, really. <laughs> and the mine was active from 1870 till 1883. Its total yield over 13 years was 222 tonnes of, yield of lead. For a value of today's a value of £195,000. But the estimated cost was in excess of 10,000, which today was 1 million. In 1876, the Montpellier Silver Lead Mining Company was formed. Captain John Woolcock was in charge, described as an old miner who had been very successful in the Beckworth mining venture. Mm. The mine ceased working in 1884 when the mining property machinery and lease was put up for sale in the bankruptcy. It was all being advertised in 1895 by Mr. G. Drinkwater, the Crown Receiver. This is only a brief account of mine. There are far better versions of the mine history than this, so check them out. There's loads online, actually. Loads. There's a guy um, called Peter Geddes. He's a real mi <laughs> mine of information. <laughs> 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 Sorry, Peter. <laughs> he is, actually. He, he's, he knows a, a lot about the mines. He's a nice bloke as well. Yeah. Mm. But, yeah, there's tons out there. So if you're into mines, yeah. don't, definitely go online and have a look. Don't take us for it because it's just a brief history. It's not our main interest. Mm. Well, I think um, it's been a good day, Carla. What, were you, what do you think? You have never been here, have you, until today? I try not to think, really. No, you're not gifted like that, are you? Um, okay, 
I remember Billy Connolly did this with the kids. What was your favorite part of the trip? <laughs> and they said Sesame Street. <laughs> oh, God. My favorite part of this was walking Jerry's father's path. Charles? Yeah. I, I just love the whole story behind it. And we haven't finished yet. We're going to take Windy Ridge way back down. Um, may take a few pictures on the way. But we're going back. We don't often do a video on the way out. Do no, we? we don't normally. But because on the way up, we just sort of wandered off into a field. And we didn't. I don't know if we took the actual proper path. I can't see a pram going the way we went. But we did a bit of it. But I'd like to see the direction that Charles went with the kids. On the way back. On the way back, yeah. yeah. That, and, but do you know what? And then all that moaning coming up the river. You and then you... as soon as I seen that reservoir. Wow. And it was to, on there. It, I, yeah, it doesn't take a lot really, does no, it? No, she's easily pleased. I folks. only whinge a little bit, but it's soon yeah. masked over by a good reservoir seems or like, mine. Seems like hours, but it probably isn't really. <laughs> <laughs> mm. What do you say you want to stay at mine for dinner, are you? Yeah. You want fed? Yeah. I'd cut that attitude out then. Oh, darling. <laughs> <laughs> um, what else? And uh, I've said a few times, and I'll say again, every time I visit these places, I always discover something I didn't see. And today, my highlight was that structure, whether it's a chapel or a walled garden or whatever it is. I hope yeah. somebody knows what it is, because I don't know. It's too big for a keel, we think. We think. It's a, bit, it's a um, big keel. But it does look like a walled garden. It's got an entrance at one end, which you would have on a keel, but it's like the double size of a keel. So, I mean, but like I said to you, if they would want any place of worship with working with all this danger, you know, would they go up there and have a little <sighs> prayer? I don't know. They've got the Bagaro Chapel just down the road here. And, I mm. mean, don't know. I, I don't know is the answer. We really don't know. Hopefully somebody can put us right if they watch the video or somebody asked the question. We'd love to know. Yeah, someone will know. So I think that's it for today, my darling. Do you think so? Yeah. Off to Windy Ridge we go. Yeah, yeah. You'll be, you should be okay in Windy Ridge, I'm sure. <laughs> You're pushing your luck. I'll put, put my coat in my bag as well. Oh. Getting a bit hot. Mm. Yeah. It's a lovely name, Windy Ridge. It is. I like it. It is indeed. Oh, the dogs. Look at them having a whale of a time with this sheep crap. I'll leave them at your house tonight, I think. <laughs> Come on, doggies. Home we go. It's what Angela called it. Angela one of the Angela kids. Barker, yeah. Right. Um, or, well, they all called it Windy Ridge. So... So for those who are not sure, runs along sort of a half the upslope again, running back into Kirk Michael, and you can see if you're fetching a pram, it's it'll be a good nice. track. Yeah, I'm always loving this because, well, one, we don't have a pram, but we're not going up a river. Right. Come on, dogs.